Hey guys, Deathletter Magic here, and I know this is going to shock you, but I actually stumbled across a very interesting article on Daily MTG. I know, I'm surprised too. And it explains the history and the interactions between the staff and, and all the behind-the-scenes stuff at Wizards of the Coast that happened while designing the first two Ravnica blocks. And it legitimately is fascinating. And uh, it is kind of telling about how things work there. I mean, yeah, it was a while ago, but... It really sounds familiar, let's just put it that way, so I couldn't resist. Now if you're super into this, I would highly recommend you actually read the entire thing because I'm leaving things out and summarizing and whatever. Otherwise, here is my shortened breakdown of it and my reaction to it. So this article starts with a long explanation and detailed account of how both Darksteel and Kamigawa were not Mark Rosewater's fault. In case you're like, wait, what do you mean their fault? Uh, they were terrible. <laughs> I mean... Darksteel alone, I heard that a, it almost killed the whole game, the product, the company, everything. So, yeah, to say it was bad would be an understatement. So, um, he's kind of making the same design mistakes that they did and the same design mistakes that he's talking about right now, except 14 years later. But, honestly, the guy before him, Bill Rose, was evidently very bad at his job as well. Like, much worse by comparison. So, whatever, I'll take Mark's word for it on this one. So after that wonderful setup, he talks about the first Ravnica set and how five years had passed since Invasion, so they thought, hey, it's been five years, why not do another multicolored set? But they didn't want to just copy Invasion, and that's a bit of an understatement because, as he puts it, they did everything exactly the opposite. So Invasion was like, play as many colors as you can, ally colors are better, and color matters. So the first Ravnica set, they focused on instead, or at least this is what they are initially going for, I'm not sure if that's what they landed on, play as few colors as you can, enemy colors are the best, and, you know, the most prevalent, most powerful, you know, just the best, the most prominent, whatever, uh, and color doesn't matter. So, uh, if you want a multicolor set that's, you know, multicolor by design, you know, two colors is going to be the minimum to consider it multicolored, you know, whereas, like, Theros was, uh, you know, Devotion, it was monocolored. Um, but how then would you run as few colors as possible and make color not matter? Well, hybrid mana. Um, well, I mean, okay, colorless, obviously, but that's boring. Colorless sets suck. Uh, so hybrid mana is where you can pay either, like, red or black, for example. So it's got a, a two colors and then a slash through it, and it shows both on, like, the top left and the bottom right. So, uh, uh, you know, kind of neat, interesting invention. Uh, it's actually more flexible than monocolored, if you think about it, because you can put it in either deck and pay either or, so your mana base is even less restrictive than it would be in, I guess, even a monocolored deck, or at least as open. So honestly, yeah, it makes the most sense. It's the perfect solution. I mean, you want to do two color, but you want to make it really not matter? Hybrid mana. Just let you pay either or. I mean, it, it it's absolutely brilliant. So Mark said he ran around the office. I think we all know that's almost definitely, literally, um, showing his idea to everyone, and basically everyone received it poorly. What? <laughs> they were like, is anyone asking for this? Why do this? I don't get it. Wow, okay, everyone who worked there at the time was a complete idiot, apparently. Because if you can't figure out mathematically and play-wise why hybrid mana is a fantastic new idea, you should not be working on magic or really any card game at all. Or anything that involves logic or math. Because it's just like giving people options and going the other way with it when you've already got colorless where you can spend anything. It's like halfway in between anything and you know, monocolored. I mean, like, Afflict is halfway between Trample and not Trample. So, of course, it'd be like, yeah, perfect. Like, you know, why not? Let's put Afflict on a creature. So, then Mark goes back on what he said about enemy versus ally colors. Uh, that refers, by the way, in case you're not familiar, to their position on the color pie, which I just call the color pentagon because it doesn't even resemble a pie. It, it is literally a pentagon. But then again, I call a control deck a control deck, but a specifically counter spell deck an anti-magic deck because, you know, every video game ever and D&D, &D, but apparently people lose their minds when I say that, so whatever. But um, basically, at the end of the day, instead of enemy colors, ally colors, oh, what combinations are the most important? They just made 10 color combinations, and they made them uh, equal in card prevalence and power balance, all that. You know, obviously, the 10 guilds. Uh, by the way, not everybody knows this, but that is commonly how sets are designed. They come up with a thing, and they're like, let's do 10 equal two-color pairs, 
and then the creative team makes a plane, they make a story, they add the characters, and that's all later. Um, so that's why, you know, later they came up with the guild system. They didn't say, oh, let's do 10 guilds, that'll be cool. Let's make them be some colors, and then they, like, they work around it. Like, they're like, oh, the guilds would be a neat idea. And then they take the neat idea and try to stuff a mechanic and a color identity into that and then add a storyline, or, or, well, add that to the storyline. So also, Mark had told them, the creative team at the time, that he wanted the story and lore and feel and flavor and all that to outline the philosophy of two color combinations. Um, I'm not going to actually go check what each guild's history is, but basically like, oh, white, black, well, that might be like necromancers or something, or like dark angels or whatever. And then like black, green, oh, rotting plants. I mean, duh, red, black, I don't know, aggressive and destroyed everything. You know, just the, the, it should reflect the color philosophies and putting them together should be the key. That should be the guild's identity. Now, I'm not saying that any of those are what Ravnica actually ended up with. I, I'm super not familiar with the guilds. I first started playing when RTR came out, so yeah. I'm just saying the general style and the story and all that kind of writes itself. Like, Black Red would probably not be a bunch of, like, angels and priests, I'm just saying. Well, they did go ahead with hybrid mana cards, um, even though it was, like, just Mark saying, oh, this will work, trust me. And, uh, you know, it's good that he did. Like, some of his ideas are great, and then everybody tries to stop him, and some of his ideas are terrible, and everybody fails to stop him. So, overall, I think Mark's bad for the company, in case I haven't made that terrifically clear. I, I love him as a person. His personality's great, but uh, not so much uh, really anything else at all. Like, he seems fun, and he's very, like, anti the rest of Wizards and doesn't get along with everybody, so I can respect that, but not absolutely anything else about him. But anyway... Uh, the hybrid mana cards went to playtesting. Just the initial, just white cards with, like, sticky notes on them or whatever. They, I think they said actually adhesive labels is how they do it. Um, so that they can kind of playtest it. So playtesting said it was too complicated, uh, at the very least for sealed. Because you know what to do. You sort them by color or you sort them by, by like creature non-creature and also by color well now you've got hybrid so you it's like oh well would this go in because it shares one color should i go two and just the sheer number of combinations was insane it made it way too difficult they thought so they were like hey let's just do some of the guilds per set because remember all 10 of the guilds i guess at that point were supposed to be in one set and then the next set and the next set it was just gonna be 10 10 10 uh, so yeah, ta-da, Complexity Lord, just, you know, do a couple of color combinations and that's that. So by the way, he just kind of implies that the original plan was going to be 10-10-10, he doesn't actually say it. But I mean, to that end, like, really? <laughs> they thought that would work? <laughs> so they decided on 4-3-3 three, three instead. That was, I guess, the second idea. So four guilds in the first set, three in the next one, three in the next one. They considered 5-3-2, according to him... Until they realized, and I am not joking, that two guilds in one set would completely leave out an entire color. Hmm, you don't say. So, yes, it actually took them staff time and work hours to figure out that two plus two doesn't equal five. What the hell? So they basically almost printed a set that, like, just left out a color, I guess. I, I don't know. I mean, an entire color would have been missing from the set, guys. Or... I, I mean, I don't know what they would have done. He doesn't say. Uh, maybe one entire color would have been just, like, core set style filler and reprints and just staple cards and, and like, nothing to do with the guilds or... I, I don't know. Would they have literally printed a set with, like, no red at all? I mean, it, it would be interesting, I guess. <laughs> would they even put mountains in it? I, I don't know, but that's just... Wow. Five, three, two. Yeah, sure. So, good thing you caught that one, guys. Um, <laughs> gosh. It gets stupider from here, by the way. The fact that they even considered that worries me. It really does. So then after that, I guess he said that they realized 4-3-3 is impossible to draft no matter how they split the color up. Um, people would have too many of what I personally call color collisions. Once again, not sure what the official term that everybody on Reddit uses, nor do I care because modern magic terminology is annoying and stupid and I hate it. Oh, you're running Jeskai Black, which is not a thing at all. It's called Everything But Green. Actually, a long time ago, there was a four color set and it actually has a name, but nobody knows it. 
I mean, if you're going to stick with stupid, outdated nicknames, use them all. So anyway, yeah, color collision's not good. You got eight people at a table, and there's only three color combinations. It's going to get ugly real quick. And honestly, there would be, like, such a high volume, it might actually work. But he said that they said that it wouldn't work. Like, playtesting was like, you can't draft this. So fear not, they consulted the great and powerful Brian. He was like... Nah, we can make 4-3-3 happen. So they were just, like, worried that it was undraftable. They were pretty sure it would be too difficult to draft. But Brian said they could do it. I totally forgot Brian's last name. It was, like, T-something. I don't know. So they proceeded with it. So uh, they sent some card ideas out and basically, like, a prototype of Ravnica to playtesting. And they were uh, confused and hated it because, well... Why are there only four color combinations? You know, that problem they already knew about. Imagine that. Uh, so red flags everywhere and it's going poorly and they're just like, let's proceed anyway because, and then dot, 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 no excuse. Um, now, th I will give them this. The set ended up being really good. But uh, by the way, guys, I don't know if you figured this out yet or not, but there are five colors in each magic set and two plus two doesn't equal five. Nor does 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. So putting four guilds in one set, yeah. So they started designing the first set in the block with four guilds, and they were just like, this doesn't work, despite what Brian said. Fear not! They came up with another solution. So their solution, in instead of, you know, obviously five, then five, then supplemental upgrades to all the guilds in the third set, which would have been the correct decision, they solved everything, you guys! By adding the phrase City of Guilds to the Ravnica title to, to make it clear that, like, what the guilds were and, and how they worked. That's right. They thought the entirety of the problem was with, with, like, draft and color identity and what people were supposed to be doing, what to build with the set. The entire problem was not trying to cram four guilds into one set. It's that people wouldn't realize that the guilds were the point. Like, they actually thought people wouldn't get the whole guild thing. Really? Like, people wouldn't understand that the set was about guilds and that guilds were two color. D just by, like, looking at the cards. I mean, wow. Like, they didn't name Ixalan the Continent of Four Tribals. Like, they, they didn't... That's not the subtitle. I don't think Ixalan actually has a subtitle. And yet, amazing me, I determined with my masterful level of wisdom, apparently, that that was the theme. In fact, I would dare venture a guess that you guys who played Ixalan and yet didn't read the storyline, still gathered that there were four major factions, and it was vampires, dinosaurs, and whoever the hell else was in that stupid set. Oh yeah, merfolk and social justice pirates. So, then they released it, and people liked it, I guess. I mean, I, I can't imagine how they liked that color split, but whatever, it sounds completely undraftable, I think they were right, and obviously I didn't play when the first Ravnica came out, so I can't give you a first-hand account of that, but, uh, I don't know, I've heard evidence to the contrary. I heard it was popular and people liked it as one of the best draft scenes ever, so... Four guilds of two colors each in a set suggests that at least three colors would be repeated. How does that even work? I don't know. Honestly, I would actually check and look at like the statistics and stuff, but uh, as I was writing the script, I was on a 3G connection, so I just didn't. I was like tethered to my phone out in the middle of nowhere. It obviously should have been 5-5 five, five, and then who cares? A 10, 5, some, mix it, it doesn't matter what the third set would be. But hey, it sold well and people liked it, so whatever. So get this, at the time, now this is pretty wild, they planned to do a multicolor heavy block every four years instead of five, and to purposely wait two cycles, so eight years, to return to Ravnica. They had planned that at the time. So they planned return to Ravnica eight years out. That is crazy. In fact, it's specifically more unbelievable since I'm fairly certain someone at Wizards mentioned fairly recently that deciding to return to a plane at all was an extremely recent idea. In fact, I think it was Mark Rosewater, the person who wrote this article. So, whatever, super not important, but I'm pretty sure that that was a distinct contradiction. Oh, and you want another shock? They wanted Return to Ravnica to be four sets instead of three now, you might think, oh, but they went to two and then they went to one, so changing the numbers is, is yeah, that's what they do, but they had, like, never done that. I mean, I'm sure it was different at some point, but they kept it the same for a very long time. So they were trying to push, hey, let's make RTR four sets in a block, uh, which, I mean, how does that divide by ten? It, it, it doesn't. It, why? Why would you do that? But anyway, they quickly learned that that was never going to happen. Imagine that. Uh, at least in a practical sense, there was no way to really do it. 
Um, so for a time they planned on, and I am once again, not joking, six, four, ten. Okay, like how? How can anyone be that stupid? It's like first grade level math. It's almost just like reducing fractions. Okay, I don't actually know what grade that is, but still. Five sets, two colors each, and five colors need to be represented equally because that's how magic works. So how would you split that up? I mean, if you do four, you're shorting a color, sort of. I mean, it depends how you do it. And if you do six, you mathematically have to repeat two colors. So what the actual hell, Brian? Which apparently, I guess, was Brian's idea. I don't know. I wrote the script like yesterday. Um, how could a person be so close to five, five, and then supplement that hits all ten without actually realizing that that's the correct way to do it? Now... Let me quote this actual article verbatim because this is a real thing that really happened in real Wizards of the Coast, according to Mark Rosewater. Just in case you think I'm making this up or misinterpreting it, here's the exact quote. He proposed numerous systems, including one where the block stretched out over four sets. Once we realized we were limited to three sets, Brian pushed for a 6-4-10 model. He even mocked up a playtest using cards from the original Ravnica block. The problem was that the large set couldn't handle more than five guilds, and the small one couldn't handle less than or more than three. God, I almost misread that. Now see, the second problem is a problem... I guess. I mean, if, if you just got to strip out too many good cards that the guild just sucks, I mean, okay. But, yeah, the large set couldn't handle more than five. Because there's five colors in magic. And every guild has to use two. Yeah. You realized that, did ya? I'm amazed. See, right there, that right there is the point where they should have reconsidered having him in that position at all or even working there. I mean... I would struggle to find an equivalent comparison of someone being that bad at their job anywhere else. To seriously consider 6, 4, 10, and then do work on it only to realize that that repeats colors or leaves out colors and the math just doesn't work. I mean, wow. I could have told you in five seconds at a game with five colors and ten guilds that, that you shouldn't put 6 and 4 in, in sets. You should do 5-5. Five, five. Okay, so if you're wondering what any semblance of logic would be, or if you've already figured it out and you're screaming it at your screen, I will give him that, as far as I know, the first set was supposed to be, you know, the largest, because remember, in the three-set block, it was always huge set, followed by two that were a lot smaller. So if they wanted to go five first, okay, and then they go to five others in the next set, it would be so much smaller that those guilds would be, like, weaker. So I guess that's why they wanted to do 6-4, but that should have been the point where they're just like, yeah, but there's five colors, so... Oh, well. So Mark eventually recommended to him, to this Brian person, that they do 5-5-10. Five, five, what a concept! Mark must be a mathematical and logistical genius. Oh my god. So then he said something I can't make heads or tails of. It didn't make sense to me. I had to look it up myself, but um, he had said, he just kept using the phrase the winter set. I don't know which one came on a winter, okay? But um, basically, he, he said like big set, small set, whatever, but Return to Ravnica was 274 cards, and Gate Crash was, I guess, I guess this is what he was saying, was much larger than normal at 249 and that was the winter set and then dragon's maze in case you forgot was 156 and everybody hated it that was a disaster so i guess gate crash wasn't supposed to be that big so he said let's do 5 5 10 and just make the winter set the middle one uh way bigger and it, it worked out it honestly completely worked out so it's like yeah that's a better solution than trying to make 6 4 10 work oh my god brian seriously Ain't nobody getting Brian a cake when it's his birthday at work. Okay, Brian apparently sucks at his job. So the next section starts with the understatement of the century, and I quote, The final set of all ten guilds, Dragon's Maze, ended up being not quite as good as we'd hoped. Really? Did it? Really? I hadn't heard that anywhere else. Hmm. I actually just mentioned it earlier. Um... God, it's it's just, yeah, you try and fit 10 guilds into, what did I just say, 140, 156 cards? Yeah, <laughs> doesn't work well, does it? Uh, and by the way, this was followed up by another winner. Here's another direct quote. 
Ironically, it ended up having a lot of the same problems as my initial Ravnica playtest all those years ago. Having 10 guilds that all must be tracked and accounted for is just a little too taxing. Yeah, I mean, if it's intended to be purely supplemental and just say this is virtually undraftable, it's a supplemental set, make whatever guild you're running in your deck right now better with this set, but it's not even a real, like, set, that might have, you know, if they would have presented it that way, it might have been better. But honestly, just the set was bad and the cards in it were bad. So, I mean, even what he said, oh, it's it's hard to track and account for all the guilds. No, they just, they didn't put enough good cards in the set is what it was. And also they, they overprinted it considering there's so few cards in it. So, I mean, like if you had 156 compared to like a 300 card set, you're going to have twice the number of each individual card. So if you print the same volume, that would be bad. And that's part of why it failed too. Oh, by the way, I love how he says, ironically, it ended up having a lot of the same problems as initial Ravnica, blah, 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 couldn't fit 10 in, whatever. Okay, Mark, Irony is when the opposite of what you would expect to happen happens. Cramming 10 guilds into one set didn't work when it's only 156 cards. Really? <laughs> I'm, I'm shocked. How ironic. I'd, I never would have expected that to be the case. Okay, so the article just abruptly stops there with zero details about the third Ravnica set, even though the intro kind of presented it as that way. Okay. Um, but I mean, let me fill you in though with what we do know. Instead of five, five, ten, it's going to be five, five, blow everything straight to hell because they're basically starting World War Three with Nicol Bolas in the third set. So I believe they said something to the effect of the third set will be the end of the guilds, like completely, and or the end of Ravnica as we know it. I mean, uh, they they just kind of hinted at that stuff. I say goodbye, okay? Blow it all up and start over. The guilds and their petty little bickering and playing politics and backstabbing and all that nonsense, ugh, it just, like, reminds me of the European Union, okay? Burn it all down and start over. The guilds, not the EU. You know what? Both. Screw it. Um, I may be projecting my own interpretation into what vague statements Wizards actually made when they announced just, like, the name, really, and the, the fashion and all that other stuff. Uh, it was quite a while ago, honestly, but maybe... In the third set, they all band together, <laughs> except banding ain't coming back, uh, but they'll, they'll join together and fight Bolas, maybe. I don't know. Or maybe, like, some of the guilds side with Bolas, but most of them don't, or others don't, or some don't, or maybe just Golgari takes over the entire plane because Bolas and, uh, what's-her-face pirate lady, Vraska. Yeah, her. I mean, that would kind of suck because they're dicks, but uh, I don't know. It's, it's an awfully far away release. I mean, we're like, what, like a year out from it? So, you know, whatever. Anyway, that's the long history of Ravnica, how they developed it, and just the disastrous disorder that is Wizards planning. I mean, it's, it's, it's astonishing, honestly. <laughs> I mean, if this is the intelligence level, the process, and the checks and balances system that, like, resulted in all of the things that he said in this article, Wizards and their R&D and creative team and development and all that, I, just, oof, I am not surprised that they changed it lately, which, FYI, they changed it lately. It's just a bunch of, like, hey, do this. That sounds neat. Let, let's do this. And then you just, like, pass it off to another department and tell them to make it work, and now it's their problem. Surprise, it didn't work. It never did, honestly. So, um, you know, that, like the deadline approaches and they just kind of throw out something and then it doesn't work, but then they stick with it. And doesn't that sound familiar, like all these design mistakes? So they shook it up in the last really year, but also like year and a half, two years with how they design. And I think they like merged two different departments and I don't know, whatever they try, hopefully it works better. I think we're yet to even see like the results of that, unless maybe even like Ixlam was the latest one to do that. I don't remember. But, I mean, yeah, they just look at, like, Journey into Nyx, apparently. Like, that's, it fell flat on its face. It just didn't work. I mean, they just throw out something that they probably know doesn't work, but it's like, whatever, that's what we ended up with. And whose fault is it? Everyone's and nobody. Oh, well. That's why this whole let's pass it from department to department thing just doesn't really work. So, personally, by the way, I like Journey into Nyx, but I, I heard it sold like crap and people didn't like it, so... You know, whatever. At the end of the day, remember this. If it doesn't sell well, it doesn't matter why or how much the people who like it like it. Someone screwed up. I mean, as creative or awesome or unique and interesting as a set is, it doesn't matter if the customers won't buy it for 
any reason because they're a business and they need to make money. Okay. They're not just doing this for the fun of it. It's not just some, Oh, in our spare time art project where if people don't like it all, uh, whatever, there's always tomorrow. They need to sell this. They are a business. They need to make a game that works. And TCGs are incredibly difficult to design and to make playable, if not, you know, perfect or close to it. So needless to say, I hope the new Ravnica sets don't suck. Um, they're resetting standard by cycling out four sets. Remember that. So whatever we get now, we're stuck with for the longest amount of time. So do not screw this up, wizards. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next video.